All right, there's some people here. Plenty of people, okay. All right, so I guess to start, I'll talk about myself, of course. Um, I'm Stacy Litz. Uh, I do a lot of things, um, wear many hats, I guess. Uh, but uh, for Adult Expo mainly, I'll, I'll talk about um, c for ss I'm the social media, social media analyst of uh, Center for a Stateless Society. Uh, I used to write a little bit for them, but they're like way too good at that and uh, <laughs> I guess I wasn't good enough so I moved down a little bit to do their social media work um, and after a while you know things sort of like stagnated off everything was really sustainable with that so um, I noticed that uh, there's a lot of students that are anarchists and there's no niche for them and a sort of national group to help them with their student groups uh, so I wanted to start Students for a Stateless Society which is S for SS kind of like C for SS uh, mainly because um, I wanted uh, c for ss to have sort of a student aspect to it. Uh, mainly c for ss does just op-eds and like research papers and sort of academic work, so I felt like they needed more activism, more events, more student involvement. Because if you go on the website as a student, you're just like, oh, there's a lot of text here, uh, just a lot of like academia mainly, uh, which is really good, but I think students do need a place to go if they're anarchists and um, I think that this will hopefully uh, fit that for them. So, let's see. So, um, Students for a Stateless Society compared to other organizations for students, there's um, some groups like Students for Liberty, uh, Young Americans for Liberty. Young Americans for Liberty is purely political, so a lot of anarchists do not get involved with that at all. Students for Liberty is really good, I would say, for anarchists because it has sort of a mix, it tries to stay philosophical for the most part and doesn't really get political. But the problem I saw with Students for Liberty is that their leaders are all like not anarchists. Like most of their leaders are um, anarchists in some way. I've even heard them sort of make fun of anarchists. Uh, one time I was talking to them, they sort of poked fun of anarchy and, and um, didn't take it seriously, so I was a little mad about that. So I wanted a group that had anarchist leaders, anarchist objectives, and um, topics that might not be discussed by other groups in great detail um, that are really important. Uh, so that's sort of why Students for a, uh, Students for a Stateless Society is needed um, more than ever, I think, now. So, kind of don't have much to say about it. I'll talk a little bit about the plan I have. Uh, the, there is a website that's up. It's uh, s for ss with a four dot org, sort of like c for ss dot org. So you can go check that out. There's some bloggers up um, writing now. Nick Ford is one of them who's been blogging. It's pretty good. Um, so <laughs> he puts up videos of himself uh, <laughs> rambling. So. So yeah, my whole plan with it is to, uh, I guess I'll start talking with um, affiliation with Students for a Stateless Society. So if you're a student group, like Students for Liberty is a huge group, of, or a huge list of groups, um, about 300 or so uh, student-based groups on campuses. So um, some of them though, they're called like Republicans for Liberty or something. So. If an anarchist is looking for a group to join, um, you know, they'll go to Students for Liberty website and what happens if there's only a Republican group listed? They might not want to join it for their campus. So I wanted to go through that whole list and contact everyone and ask them, are you an anarchist friendly group? And if they are, uh, they can affiliate with us and be listed on our website. So then when there are anarchist students that are looking for a group to join, they'll see, you know, this group is friendly to anarchists, so I can join it. Because I don't know how many anarchists would join like a Republican group, but some people's names don't necessarily determine what they talk about. So I think the affiliation process is really important, you know, to be listed as anarchist friendly and all that um, so that'll be on the website then um, we have uh, c for ss speakers that are listed uh, if, if anyone on their campus wants to host a speaker so a lot of people who write for Center for a Stateless Society or work for them are listed on that so they will be available um, to speak on your campuses we're working
working on tabling kits now. So um, a problem with a lot of other national student organizations is that they only offer things like pocket constitutions and um, lots of like political policy literature to hand out. So we wanted to offer some uh, anarchist-based pamphlets, kind of like the ones back there. And um, we also wanted to start making our own because a lot of those are sort of like really um, niche and really intense for beginner readers. So if you're handing out pamphlets on campus, someone might look at those and just throw them away. But if it's a beginner's guide to anarchy, that would be great to have. Um, that's something, yeah, a lot of groups don't offer for anarchist students and for spreading the ideas. So the tabling kits are really good. Uh, and that would help us fundraise too, because we would ask for a small fee and then send them the kits and we would get to keep some of the money for them to make more mainly. Um, and then we do want to um, kind of focus on some academia because a lot of people like think that anarchy has no like academic background but there's a lot of reading, a lot of philosophy. So um, there would be essay contests for students to take part of. Uh, there would probably be like a money incentive like if you win you get so much money um, which we would have to fundraise. So um, that would be great to have students entering that and Students for Liberty um, could help us promote those easily so that'd be good and I was thinking of also having students submit um, like any papers they've written for school, any research papers that have anarchist topics so that would be great um, to put on our website in a certain section. Um, and uh, Center for a Stateless Society has a thing called Stateless U, so it's like taking classes online, uh, and they they seem to they're pretty good at running it, but oftentimes it kind of seems to like not be as run as best as it could. So I was thinking that maybe uh, S4SS could take over that and uh, have someone who's specifically working on that and making sure it runs, like maybe biannually um, every year, having classes for people to take um, if they're interested in anarchist ideas. Um, so that's that would be really important to have. What was the name of that? Uh, it's called Stateless U, and it's on the Center for a Stateless Society's <laughs> website now. Um, but I think it's been a long time since the last class was held, but maybe only like six months, but I'm antsy, I guess, but <laughs> yeah, but it's really good. You just do classes online and uh, it's really cool. Like you get to read stuff, participate in like a forum, and you learn a lot, so. Uh, Seems like something that maybe could, I remember Z, Znet, Z Communications had mm. something like that a few years ago. And then peer-to-peer -peer university is one of the coolest things that I've come across recently. Mm. So maybe it could be like a school of anarchy within peer to peer university. That'd be really cool, yeah. Yeah, it's something to talk about. Um, yeah, so I find that that could definitely be put into Students for a Stateless Society because C4SS is mainly like articles and some like research articles, like longer featured articles. Um, but they, I don't know, like if they're biting off more than they can chew with the Stateless U because a lot of them are really busy with that. And um, yeah, I think they need new people to work on that. So, um, and yeah, getting uh, Students for a Stateless Society at things like Pork Fest and uh, conferences, having speakers out there, student speakers. Um, and maybe even having our own conferences in the future, similar to Students for Liberty, like an international conference or a regional conferences, that would be really great. Um, and also, I guess lastly, an idea is just to have Students for a Stateless Society members start training to write op-eds and uh, pieces for the Center for a Stateless Society, because that's their main function. But um, getting like guest writers would be awesome more. Um, to see like different perspectives because sometimes it can be the same writers over and over again and people want to see a variation, they want to see what the students are doing, so I think that's really important. Uh, so I guess just um, we have, well there's a lot of positions open um, if you are a student and you want to get involved, um, like fundraising, development, we always need bloggers, social media, uh, someone to take over for the stateless you. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity with it. It is just starting. Um, yeah, right now the website is just up, and there's some bloggers and. But yeah, I just had a question. I was wondering. Um, I mean, it seems like you started reaching out to maybe the Republican side of this young, whatever young mm -hmm. American Yeah, yeah young American What about like I'm been a while since I'm in college, but yeah. what is there on like the social anarchist side? I'm assuming it's probably more established. Some groups at schools where you can reach out and kind of go with them as well, or is it kind of? 
like the democratic socialist stuff and the like the, yeah there's um yeah there's a yeah it it, it kind of works yeah we um just had a young democratic socialist group open at Drexel we went to some of their meetings and it became kind of debatey and it was like us sitting on one side and them sitting on their side but that was because their topics were very philosophical and we were just going on and on but um we definitely then talked afterwards and we're really excited that we can work together on things like anti-war stuff and anti-drug war and all that so that is really good to do um the problem is though like students for liberty will not probably list those groups so you got to go look for them in another way like uh, sds is the big one so and the young democratic socialists those are the two groups that you'd probably want to look into but i guess like we could probably recommend like on our site like to look for those groups too and maybe when we do the affiliation process ask them if they're anarchist in all ways like anarchy without adjectives sort of friendly yeah. and we can put them on our site under affiliates so that's a good idea though Keep in mind. yeah so um yeah i really don't have much else so if there are any questions uh, this was really short yeah but yeah um, I don't, this is pretty much one of the first times I've heard of this organization, so just the background, is it more, is this more like an anarchist left or right thing, or is it all inclusive? This is, it's because uh, it's based out of the Center for a Stateless Society. They promote market anarchy, so um, it's mainly focused on that. But um, a lot of people, you know, are all over the place with their adjectives and hyphens. So um, I guess like. It probably will, like, in the mission, it's going to say, like, probably strictly market anarchist base, but as long as you kind of believe in no government, I think that's good. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And there's always, like, I've talked to many anarchists. We all, like, say, a lot of us say we're market anarchists, but then we vary in so much, so we're all different anyway, so you really can't discriminate too much on that. And, yeah. And I would not want to do that because I've seen other... Like um, I've seen other national student groups discriminate against people who maybe are into like 9/11 truth. A lot of them are. I mean, not that. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it's like something they probably shouldn't like say. I'm like, like, you, like if you're a truther, you can't join our group. Like, I've heard that said, and it's really discouraging. So, yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, like seriously, like some of the like hardest workers in those groups were 9/11 truthers, and uh, and um, yeah, they were told, you know you suck <laughs> and then they left the group and now you know there's less hard working people in like a certain area of the country certain campuses are now like losing their attendance and it's bad so I don't like that <laughs> and then my other question was on, on your website do you have like an update list of where like, what campuses and different schools have the chapters established yeah that's something that needs to be worked on like the website's pretty much a skeleton now with like some blog posts so um um, the affiliation part will have like a list of groups and a way like a form they can fill out to affiliate and be listed and that'll most likely be free to do you know because we want that to be done then. and once you're affiliated you get um, the perks that we offer like tabling kits like the pamphlets and um, opportunities so that's why you probably want to affiliate and to be listed for more promotion so yeah so oh, any other questions? But yeah, it's just a, it's something to look forward to. I really think it's going to be big by next Pork Fest. Everything will be well established, and student groups will be listed, and it's going to be awesome. So to what extent have you actually talked to Brad Spangler about all this? I mean, I know you talked, and I'm just curious. Yeah. What to do. Well, we retalked um, recently. Like I kind of took this under my own wing. Brad's really busy. Brad Spangler is like the head of Center for a Stateless Society, if you don't know. Um, so I was just like talking to um, Mike, who's their web manager. And I'm just like, I want this domain name. So he bought it for me and gave it to me. And then he put down just like the base on WordPress. So I just took it over, made the template. Brad was kind of in on it. I was just like, Brad, I want to do this. And he was like, OK, uh, I have all these other ideas that are different than yours. And I'm like, oh too bad so I just like did this <laughs> yeah because because awesome. yeah at, at c for ss they're really um good with a lot of stuff but kind of slow on change and i'm just kind of like let's do it let's do it let's do it so um yeah i just made this and 
I think like eventually once he sees like there's hard working people on it, he'll be fine with it and um, we'll get linked on the website. As soon as everything's like up and running, I want to get like an official release through the Center for Stateless Society, official stuff. But we have like Facebook group up, um, and our Facebook page, it's getting a lot of likes so we're working on just getting a little base established before we release so people don't, aren't like, what is this thing, it's nothing, it's not worth it because people judge like that so yeah should be good uh, if you're gonna look for material that's like introductory to anarchist thought are you gonna is there a way that you're gonna go about choosing what piece to use or do you want to have people writing new material yeah I think I, I talked to Brad about this and he said um, yeah like the the pamphlets back there are a little bit too intense for like noobs to be reading and they might not get it <laughs> yeah so um, we were thinking that I'm just writing our own and making a whole new set of stuff and that would also be really good for you know starting up and having our name on it like we did this we made this and give us like credit and all that so I think starting new stuff and if anyone's interested in doing that and helping like you can talk to me and, and get that going yeah I'm interested, but, yeah uh, of course second, <laughs> second thing uh, is um, to counter the constitution thing you could use what C4SS did the no treason thing mm -hmm. they had the pocket no treason and I think they had Roderick Long's ten responses to anarchism uh, or yeah. objection to anarchy. So I think they have that in pocket form, so that could be for s 4 Yeah. Or you could do your own thing. You yeah, know, something that, um, comic yeah, comic books, are, <laughs> yeah, like the Federal <laughs> Reserve comic, comic books. There's a comic um, character named Anarchy in the Batman series. But yeah, like something anarchist groups struggle with, though, are fundraisers and development people, and um, c for ss has a little bit of trouble, I think, fundraising a bit, so if anyone has experience with that, like, it's really needed, um, yeah, <laughs> but the development people, development training. I know Students for Liberty is great because they basically hardcore train people to fundraise, 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 but that's something also I had a problem with with those other groups, um, other student liberty groups, is that they spend so much time fundraising and trying to get donors that they sort of lose touch of, um, you know, the stuff at hand, the philosophy, the activism, and it's just all about the money and it can kind of kill groups, so, yeah. I'm not familiar with market anarchy, but from the sounds of it, uh, to, I'm wondering, like, starting a business, starting generating some cash flow other than begging? Um, you mean, is that, you mean like, is that good? Well, I mean, that, <laughs> for, for, for me, that's, that's, like, that's how I try and fund a lot of my things these days, is mm -hmm. either asking, fund me specifically, Patrick Gibbs, or yeah. here's this project, we're providing a service of some sort that you can purchase and you're also welcome to give donations um, so whether it's like trainings or doing something so that you're actually so that you're yeah. providing a service and yeah generating and what's good yeah i think that um yeah the money that will be donated goes like directly to things like tabling kits directly towards essay contests directly towards website management all that stuff so it goes into things but yeah with like other nonprofits, you kind of see like give me money but there's no like list of where it goes i think c for us is great because they list on their website this is where this is who's getting paid for doing what they're doing and it's really nice there's no like disappearing money so if if we're having a essay contest and we need five hundred dollars we're gonna fundraise that so and it'll go right to that and not disappear so it's to farmers i mean try to so just ask farmers to make you gotta, food. You gotta, you gotta make a bunch of farmers into anarchists. Oh yeah, true, true. We have the S4SS uh, market garden on campus, so you're like hanging out, yeah. growing yeah. food, selling, or giving the food away for donations, whatever it is. I mean, it can be a sliding scale, but that's something why we should get involved with more like SDS, like Social Democrats and stuff, because they're all into that whole like community garden type stuff and sort of like hippie yeah, culture and it's good and uh, <laughs> it's, it's really good so it's yeah guys, like, I like it 40% you know, of the time in the community garden was done by anarchists and then they got the produce and then the yeah. other SDS guys or whatever the, the left guys get the produce for the 60% they do everyone, everyone can agree on that yeah. I, think, um, I think it might be helpful um, at least for some people in the audience to explain what market anarchism is because some might not be familiar with it so I mean maybe based just on your understanding of it do you want to do that? Because I would probably fail. 
I, I guess I could do it. Yeah, you're um, a better talker than me. <laughs> okay. It's pretty simple, actually. Um, so market anarchism uh, can be described in a lot of ways, I guess. But um, yeah, anarchism is basically the idea that you should have the control over your own uh, life, your own destiny, the own product of your labor. And market anarchism <laughs> is just saying that the marketplace where all voluntary trading would go on is the best environment for that kind of life to exist. Is, is that how I would describe it off the top of my head, right? Is that, how is that different than agorism? Um, they're actually very similar concepts. Um, agorism just kind of has, um, I, I pronounce it differently, sorry. Um, agorism agorism um, has specific strategies. Mark and anarchism has sort of a broad sort of strategy. So I've always seen agorism under anarchism, under market anarchism especially, um, but um, agorism has more specific strategies like counter-economics, um, is their main strategy. But market anarchism, you could have direct action, you could have um, counter economics, you could have civil disobedience, you could you could do education, whatever. So, agorism isn't limited to counter uh, uh, counter economics, but that's just the thing. You know, it's the focus. Yeah, exactly. so it's like the focus. Trade, trade to help. It's the whole yeah. system to come down. Like setting so up institutions that are competitive to government ones would be like it's, it's building it's building the, the, the city hall. It's building the, the new society within the shell of the old which is the old IWW like, I consider market anarchy one of the best kinds of anarchy just because within it you could have any other kind of anarchy like in a commune situation so like market anarchists wouldn't tell like social anarchists to like not have their little socialist commune somewhere they can do that they're free to do that like any anyone can do what they want in their own commune situation as long as they don't like you know tell me what to do and force me to do that. So an it's pretty. Yeah, I'm an anarcho elitist. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It's just. I, I mean, I thought about it a lot. I'm just like, yeah. And that's what I tell people who are like, well, I think everyone should be socialist, but somehow anarchist. And it's like, okay, well, you can do that in my kind of anarchy, but uh, yeah, other people can do what they want to do too. So there's no fighting really, and um, there's enough room, I think, on this planet for that to happen. There's enough space, enough cities, enough everything, you know, for people to go where they want to go and still be happy and all that. I went from, so, I, I would, right here is where I had to plug for the 6 to 7 o'clock event about restorative justice and nonviolent communication that I'm one of the hosts for. It's, I see that as a, as a, as a key sort of lubricant for making that kind of society possible because it's not just like, because we can have the like, okay, we disagree and we're not going to talk to each other, or we disagree and we still live next door and we're going to call in a mediator when we need a mediator. So I think I think that having mediation skills in the community is a key enabler yeah. for market anarchists. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a lot of great um, community organizations, and um, in Philadelphia, there's one starting. It's probably going to be called Neighbors Helping Neighbors. So it has like no libertarian, no anarchist like words in it at all, but um, it's just going to be like a community effort to get people who are like on welfare, like contributing back, but then taking what they need so they kind of feel like more independent and it brings back the individual to them instead of like always relying on government. So stuff like that is happening and I think that, yeah, a lot of anarchists kind of, I think anarchists get more involved with community service than more than uh, like libertarians, big L libertarians and stuff. So I think, yeah, bring that back and, yeah, be cool. There's a lot of opportunity, so. Is there, like, competition between student groups now? There's so many different uh, student, students. Um, well, pretty much all these national groups offer something to the little groups. So, like, Students for Liberty will do free books, conferences, tons of stuff, speakers, anything they can find. Um, and YAL, Young Americans for Liberty, is mainly political, so if you... Uh, follow their guidelines. You can get Ron Paul on campus. It's really intense. You have to have like a huge petition signed and all this stuff. So they're political. Um, Students for Liberty is philosophical and political, but mainly they, tr they try to stay out of politics. They they can't. Uh, they're like a 501c3, so they can't really say they're supporting any candidate. So um, yeah, but yeah, they're they're good. It's just I, I found like the only problem is that. 
Um, well, Yale is totally problematic because they're political, and Students for Liberty is only problematic because they don't have anarchist people leading, and um, I think that's different than having a. St and they're not strictly anarchist, so. And that's but then the idea with this, this would be non political and anarchist. Yeah. That, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is the <laughs> Jack, you're gonna, you're gonna like. Yeah, and I have I have not really seen any student groups like really called like anarchists or some anarchists whatever like or students for a stateless society anything like that. They're all like something for liberty or like temple libertarians or like you know. So they're not really anarchists. Have you been to the Northeast <laughs> Anarchist Summit? I remember I, I went to him for college not. two years and they. It, it seemed like that way mostly students. Like I saw there's the NE, the Northeast Alliance for Liberty or something mm. like that. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of was say there's a Northeast uh, Anarchist Network that mm. also does that. So maybe looking yeah. at them. Yeah, it's just um. Probably not market anarchists. Mm. I remember hearing someone from that say that she thought anar anarcho capitalism was bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think like times are changing too. Cause back three years ago, I I started the well, I was I didn't start it. I I joined the Student Liberty Front Drexel. Um, it's just Student Liberty Front, so no anarchists words in there but um and when I joined it they were all pretty much like libertarians like minarchist libertarians um and then eventually we all kind of turned into anarchists but the name is still student liberty front but I think now there's like more youngsters like that are anarchists and then they go to college and they're like ooh I want to start an anarchist group so yeah and that's why yeah the the affiliation process is really important because anarchists want to find other anarchists and I can't tell you how many times like real anarchists have come to our tables real anarchists yeah they come because this is like different than usual because um, people come up to our tables they're like well I don't really like government and stuff and are you guys like because we have the constitutions on our table and they're like so what are you guys and we're like oh yeah we're all anarchists but this is all we get so this is what we give you um, so yeah but I think that's why there needs to be this list and everything and it's how are, definitely how are the demographics of the group so far? Like, um, you mean students for a stateless society or my group at Drexel well I, well this is all like just starting so it's all anarchists like blogging for it so far um, but my group um, we have only like what like two we have like two um, half Republican, half libertarian trolls, and then we have like all anarchists. Yeah, like, like, like male, In, female, and oh, male, and female. Alright, so there's me and one other girl who just graduated, and then all guys. <laughs> So, <laughs> but in general, I mean the racialized as different things. Well, there's a lot of um, guys, white guys, <laughs> white middle class guys. Um, Do you expect anything less from? I mean, I, I could say it's like it's like. 99.99999 percent white ma or ma white, and then yeah, and Kenneth is Asian. We have one Asian guy. Um, yeah, and yeah, I mean that's something that should be thought about too in general. Just like what's up with the racial thing, and but I think that's why community work is really good because well, I'm from Philadelphia, so there's a lot of like racial issues and racism and um, poverty in certain demographics and it's really tough to like relate to them but I think like something like that Neighbors Helping Neighbors where we go out and try to empower the impoverished people um, you know and get them off welfare and stuff is important so yeah I don't I don't know about that but yeah there's in Students for Liberty there's a lot of chicks though now there's a lot of girls <laughs> any other questions so that's it so yeah thank you and um